Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is ignition control modules. Alright, so these are proving the flame, and they are not controlling the blower motor. Now we have an integrated furnace control like this. Alright, so it controls the blower motor, sequence of operation, every low voltage signal is what it controls. But, but you have a lot of these ignition control modules out here, and I just want to explain the differences. One of the differences is that, see this has a PV and an MVPV? This one here has a PV and an MVPV. This one here has a PV and a PVMV. So PVMV always means the common. And PV means pilot valve. So these three have pilot valves, and this one and this one do not. So these two are direct ignition because there is no pilot. These are pilot ignition. This particular one is a single rod setup. All right. What you have is 24 volts comes in, comes in on 24 volt, and then comes back out through the common. That is going to then turn on the pilot valve. So 24 volts is going to come out the PV, is going to come back through the MVPV, which is common. All right. This will be now hot, and that's common. And what's going to happen is the flame is going to get proven by the ground wire coming back through the flame rectification process. There is no separate flame rod for this particular module. All right, so the, so the voltage is actually sent through the sparker, which is the high voltage. So as soon as you have 24 volts coming in here, coming back out there through the 24 volts, you're going to have the high voltage, which is 6,000 volts or higher, sparking across to the pilot ground, then as well you're going to have 24 volts going out to PV and coming back through the MVPV. And what's going to happen is the flame is going to be proven through the ground wire. This green wire coming back through the GND, uh, this ground wire is typically attached to the uh, gas valve or the frame itself. All right? you're, you're looking for DC microamps coming back through here. After it proves the signal for the flame, What's going to happen is 24 volts goes to the MV and it comes back to the MVPV and that's going to open the main gas valve. All right, this one can be used on a variety of different systems. Uh, this one here is a two rod setup. So it has a spark rod and it has a sensing rod. So this was two rod, this was a single rod. Anytime that you have a system that has a vent damper for the exhaust, you're going to use this right here and you're going to need to apply 24 volts to this basically all the time and then anytime you want to turn the ignition control on to start the uh, sequence of firing you're going to end up powering 24 volts to right here th-w and then it's going to find its way back through the common all right so when that happens then you're going to get 24 volts from pv to the pilot valve and back to mvpv which is the common at the same time, you're going to send anywhere from 6 to 20,000 volts coming off of this uh, out the spark to the pilot tube. It's going to ignite the flame. And then you have the sensing rod right there as well. And the sensing rod has to be enveloped in the flame. And the sensing rod is going to have anywhere from, say, 90 to 120 volts sending it into the flame. And then it's going to get rectified and it's going to come back as DC microamps on the GND, the burner, right here. Once this control senses that the flame is intact, then it's going to power the 24 volts on MV, and it's going to come back through the common MVPV. And once again, you have your pilot ignition system. So you have to light your pilot first, and then after your pilot's lit, and it proves that there's a flame there, then it will ignite all the rest of the burners. So this is a two rod setup. Okay, you have a spark rod and a flame sensor. The spark rod you have anywhere from 6,000 to say 12,000 volts jumping across from point A to point B and it's about an eighth inch gap right there. That's what's going to ignite the fuel coming through the pilot tube. As well you have a flame rod which you're sending anywhere from say 90 to 120 volts into the flame. The voltage gets rectified in the flame and it's, and it's found as a DC microamp signal back through this ground here. It actually follows this pilot tube back to the gas valve and then you pick up the ground wire at either at the gas valve or at the ground close to that area. All right? But uh, if it was a single rod setup, 
you just have one rod and that would be your spark rod and your flame sensor rod. Okay, this type of setup doesn't take uh, a reading basically across all of the of the burners. Okay, like this one, it ignites it here and it travels across and it senses the flame basically by putting the AC voltage over on this side into the flame and rectifying it over on this burner head. So this is a, this will be considered more of a newer uh, ignition system right there. So the direct ignition, you're directly igniting the fuel coming out of all of the burner tubes. Okay, so that's direct ignition. Now you also have the uh, direct spark ignition are very popular, basically almost all of the packaged uh, units, you know, residential like commercial package units end up using a spark ignition on an outdoor package unit. That means that it is uh, built at the factory, the refrigerant's weighed in, um, and it's, it's not a split system, it's uh, all together as one, and this packaged forced air gas furnace and air conditioning systems, they're only 80% efficient, or maybe they can get up to say 85% efficient uh, transforming uh, gas to heat, but it's very popular to just have a spark ignition out there just to, um, you know, kind of be out in the weather more versus a hot surface igniter. But that's what you'd have. You have another spark rod, and as well, you have a flame rod. Now, if you were not to use the vent damper, all right, which the only reason for a vent damper on the exhaust is to uh, basically trap the heat inside say a boiler or something like that or a furnace it, so that it holds the heat down onto the heat exchanger so this is commonly used on older boilers uh, but if you did not use that then what you would do is you would not use this 24 volts right here you just send 24 volts in the TH-W and you come back through the, the ground slash common right here all right, so you would not use this if you did not have a vent damper. You could also connect that tab on there for the sense, and what that would do is it would bypass uh, checking for the flame rectification signal. If you don't use this, you should be snipping this back uh, so, that, so that this wire is not just hanging loose here. This one, once again, is a pilot ignition uh, control right here. So what you have is 24 volts comes in right here on the TH, it comes back through the TR. Once that receives that 24 volt signal, it's going to send anywhere from 6 to 20,000 volts out of the spark right here. And at the same time, it's going to power 24 volts to the PV and it's going to come back through the PV MV. That's going to open the pilot valve and that's going to allow gas and in order to light the pilot. At the same time, you are sending 90 to 120 volts through the sense rod right here into the flame and it's getting rectified and it comes back once again through to the ground okay and that's going to prove the flame rectification signal in dc microamps if there are no dc microamps or you have a bad ground like this wire right here then this module will not be able to prove a flame you want to make sure that the sensing rod is clean otherwise it could be insulated from sending the high voltage into the flame uh, in order to get rectified so that it comes back as DC microamps on the GMD. So you want to clean the flame rod with unsoaped steel wool. Once this control senses the flame, it's going to then put 24 volts on the MV and it's going to come back through the PV MV. Okay, that's going to open the main gas valve. So these two are very similar. This one just has the uh, vent damper plug on it, this one does not. These are both spark ignition. This is the single rod spark ignition. And now we're going to get into the direct ignition right here. This one is a direct ignition. There is no pilot on either one of these. And this one has a spark right here. And this one has an HSI, hot surface igniter. So we'll start with this one here. You have to have 120 volts in with the L1 and L2. That's a constant. You always have that 120 volts in. And then what you're going to have, when you power 24 volts to the TH and then it comes back out through the common, it's going to start the ignition process. So what will happen is this hot surface igniter right here is going to power, okay, for a set period of time. And then what's going to happen is the valve right here 
is going to be power, 24 volts, power to the gas valve, and then it comes back through the ground right here. Then what happens is you're also going to have this sense right here. It's going to send anywhere from 90 to 120 volts into the flame, and then it's going to get rectified at DC microamps, and it's going to come back through to the burner ground. All right, so right here. So that means that this wire is typically connected to the ground chassis as close to the combustion area as possible. Now you have this direct ignition right here, and you have 24 volts comes in the TH and it comes back out through the TR, and that will start the ignition process. You're going to have anywhere from 6 to 20,000 volts coming out the spark right here. Okay, it's going to go to the burner in order to ignite. At the same time, you're going to have 90 to 120 volts coming out of the sense, and it's going to go right in front of the burner in order to be enveloped in the flame. And then the flame is going to change the high voltage into a rectified DC microamp current, and it's going to come back through the GND. So I just wanted to go over how these work. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.